folks, how you doing? And welcome to the Lock Around the Clock for week 11. Yes, week 11. Time is flying and so is the season. And hopefully money is flying out of your bookie into your pocket like an ATM in your favor. Last week, we were 3-2 and two on the week with the Monday Night Pullout. We were 21-12-3. and three. Pardon the rush reference there. 21-12-3. 64% on the year. Kicking some serious butt here at Gino Palooza Productions. Now, this week's Lock Around the Clock starts again, as always, for the rest of the year on Thursday night. Is that awesome? We got Thursday night football, as you saw last week. Not only did I call the score, I called it 21-17. It came out 24-17. I told you Michael Bush is going to have a monster game. Turned out he did. Raiders covered, which was a side pick, but I had the under, most importantly, that came through for you. This Thursday night, no different. We're looking to go 4-0 and this week, counting the Thursday night game. And this Thursday night lock is... The Jets, minus six at Denver. Uh, Jets are minus six at Denver. Believe it or not, the Jets are a very good team. I know they're not better than uh, some teams like New England. They are fighting. The, they built themselves to beat New England, but they haven't been able to do it. They got swept this year. Uh, but now they're not going against Brady and the Patriots, who can offensively destroy you if they get on track. They're going against a team with Team, t <laughs> team with Tim Tebow. That was 0 for 4 last week against the Kansas City Chiefs, and they were still up 10 nothing uh, before the half. That's not going to happen here. They're going to stack the box. Rex Ryan is very smart. He knows how to play this team. He knows that Tim Tebow has got to beat him with his arm. Yes, Tim Tebow had like one out of his, I don't know how many passes he had total last week, but he had that one nice pass for a touchdown. That's not going to happen here. Revis Island will be open for business, and they'll be collecting balls. But believe it or not, I look for the uh, the Jets to get on track this week with the receiving. I look for Sanchez to get back on track. Denver is not that good defensively. Um, look for them at home where they have struggled. Uh, Tim Tebow is mostly ineffective for some reason on the road this year. Um, teams that the Jets have beat, they beat teams that they're supposed to beat, like Jacksonville is a blowout. They beat Buffalo 27-11, uh, although Buffalo was looking pretty good at the time. They beat San Diego, not a very good team at this point in the year even. Miami, they blew them out. These are teams that they're supposed to beat, and that's what the Jets do. They still have a lockdown defense, and look for Sean Green to get on track. Look for the Jets, minus the six, to beat up tonight on the hapless Denver Broncos. They're not going to make it this one. All right, the 1 o'clock lock on Sunday. Let's get to the lock around the clock for Sunday. 1 o'clock, yes, we are going with Oakland on this mighty Metal Weekend, yes, Judas Priest. I am wearing Judas Priest. You know why? I am wearing Judas Priest with my black throwback rally hat because it's going to be a rally throwback metal mashup weekend. Starting Friday night, I'll be at Judas Priest. Not that you care, but Judas Priest is in town, and they're rocking at the Metal Lands or the Izod Center, whatever you want to do. All right, guys, let's get back to the lock. One o'clock lock. I got Oakland at Minnesota. Oakland is only giving a point at Minnesota. Um... Oakland is 4-0 on the road against the spread, 6-3 overall, and 1-0 on turf against the spread. Very good, right? Minnesota's just horrible. They're going the wrong way. Uh, Ponder's doing the best he can, but they're not utilizing uh, Adrian Peterson to the fullest extent. Oakland has just proved that they are an offensive machine. Michael Bush is going to be the main back again this week. Look for him to pound it out against Minnesota. Look for Carson Palmer, who has been throwing very high percentage passes. If you notice, last week at the half against the San Diego Chargers on the road, he was 10-12 for 157 and a touchdown. Pretty nice, huh? Pretty sweet. Look for them to be able to get the big passes downfield to Denarius Moore. Look for the Raiders to cover the one-point spread. Look for Minnesota to get blown out in this game by Oakland on the road. Take the Raiders. It's the 1 o'clock lock. Four o'clock lock. Guess what? We got Seattle in St. Louis in the dome on the fast track. St. Louis has Bradford back the last couple of weeks. Brandon Lloyd has been tearing it up. Uh, we'll look to continue doing that. Look for this game to be a shootout. I'm not picking sides of this team, this this game, because it can go either way uh, as far as the teams are concerned. But over 39 is not a lot of points for both of these teams to put up in this game. I look for this game to end up probably St. Louis 24, Seattle 27, somewhere in that range. Look for a high-scoring game. Look for Brandon Lloyd to get off, like I said, and uh, Gibson to also shine as well. Um, Steven Jackson in this game. Now, Seattle is kind of stat against the run, but look for Steven Jackson, who's been going nuts ever since their week five bye week. Look for him to get about four or five passes out of the backfield. Probably, and this is a fantasy. 
Tennessee. Little note for you. Look for Steven Jackson to get at least 60 to 70 yards this week through the air, plus another 100 on the ground after they beat up on that defense. Both of these defenses are pretty horrible. Uh, St. Louis, on the other side of the ball, gave up 126 yards to the Cleveland Browns. Look for Marshawn Lynch to have a monster game this game, too. Look for the points to fly. Look for the over 39 in the 4 o'clock lock this week in Seattle at St. Louis. Now, on to the 8 o'clock lock, the big game of the night. Really? Probably not. It's the Giants at home against the Philadelphia Sinking Eagles. People, I have taken the Giants in this game, and there's no reason not to. Yes, McCoy is going to give them problems for a little bit, but for a little bit. Remember, Eli Manning in fourth quarters this year has 116.5 passer rating. What do the Eagles have in fourth quarters? Five blown leads. Look for the Giants to steamroll this game uh, late in the second half. Look at him get it into to a groove by the third quarter. Look for Jacobs to have a big night. I'm not sure if Ashad Bradshaw, uh, Bradshaw will be playing this week. Uh, he's questionable, but still, nonetheless, don't worry about Victor Cruz. The whole thing at the nightclub is over. It was, it was a small thing. Nobody shot themselves in their sweatpants. Uh, look for Victor Cruz to have a big game in this game. Look for the Giants, who lead the league in sacks with 30 sacks to go nuts. Because if Vince Young is back there and he's thinking this is going to be a dream team uh, thing going on, he's completely wrong. Vince Young has stunk, and the one pass he's thrown, it's been a pick for six points the other way. Um, Kafka could get action in this game. Either way, the Giants are way too powerful on defense. Going to be way too powerful on offense. And look for them to overpower the Eagles in the 8 o'clock lock. That is my 8 o'clock lock for Sunday. So as always, take my picks, take it to the book, take it to the bank, and you take it is and rock it out.